Okay, so here we go. Uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. Notice where my finger is here. Here's Rashi in, in Rashi's script, of course. Who Melech Hamoshiach. That's what Rashi says. He says that the Bar Enosh in Daniel 7, 13 and 14, who comes to the Atik Yamin on the glory clouds, is the Messiah. Where am I getting this? As you can see, I have my finger right on it. It says Rashi. And uh, here we have uh, the writings. Ketuvim. This is the art scroll edition. Okay, you can say what you want. You can say uh, no Jews believe that the Messiah is God and no Jews worship the Messiah as God, but you're refuted by one little word in the Tanakh, which is the word Palach, Pelamit Het. And as you can see in Jastro, uh, and, and you call it, this is the uh, standard Aramaic dictionary, the word Palach means to serve deity. See that? Pelamit Het. See that word there? Deity. Now, uh, look over here. Do you see Daniel chapter 3, verse 13? It says that the three friends of, of, uh, of Daniel, uh, uh, verse, uh, verse 12, uh, will not palach the tzelem, or the uh, idols, Look at verse 18, same thing. They won't palach the idols. Pay Lamed Head. You see that? Uh, that means uh, if they won't palach the idols, but uh, the Baranosh is palached. Look, look at verse 14. It says... Um, See that word right there, Palak? All peoples will Palak the, the Baranosh when he comes on the glory clouds. So if they won't Palak the idols, and uh, they will Palak the Baranosh, that means that the Baranosh Messiah is not an idol, and he is worshipped as God. Now, when you stand before Hashem on the day of eternity, my friend, saying no god no jews believe that messiah is god and no jews worship messiah as god then this little word will send you straight to gehinom and i would rather believe this little word than all the rabbinic literature ever written because i believe in the word of god the inerrant word of god and i'm going to i'm going to uh, put my uh trust in the word of god if you go down to chapter uh, 3 of Daniel, uh, there it is again, verse 18, Palach. Now, I'm going to go on and I'm going to uh, show you a few other things. But if you have this concept of a Messiah who is uh, just an ordinary man, he dies like anybody else, uh, his body sees corruption like anybody else, that means he doesn't stand, uh, stand up uh, from, the, from the dead, then that little word in Psalm 1610, shahat, will also send you to shahat, to corruption, to the fire, to the, to the uh, eternal grave worm of the last verse of Isaiah. If you want to do that, that's your choice but you have no right to preach false doctrine to other Jews and send them uh, where you're going. Watch the rest of this, please. Do you see this? This is the Zohar. It may be hard for you to read Rashi's script, but it says, 
Isaiah 53. Uh, Vahu Maholal Mipshainu Medukha Me Avanotenu. This is where it says basically he was wounded because of our transgressions. And the Zohar is saying that uh, the tzaddik is uh, smitten uh, in order to grant healing to the generation. It says in Isaiah 53, And who of his generation declared, for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people, and to make atonement for their sins, it says on this page. Uh, so, uh, we're, we're looking at Messianic prophecies. Now, if you go to afii.org forward slash afii.pdf, it will say this. The Zohar specifically quotes Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded because of our transgressions. He was crushed because of our iniquities. And the Zohar says that the Messiah summons all the diseases and all the pains and all the sufferings of Israel, that they should come upon him, and all of them come upon him. And would he not thus bring ease to Israel and take their sufferings upon himself? Then it says, No man could endure the sufferings Israel has to undergo because they neglected the Torah as long as Israel dwelt in the Holy Land, the rituals and the sacrifices they they performed in the temple received, or I'm sorry, removed all those diseases from the world. Now the Messiah removes them from the children of the world. Now, this particular uh part of the Zohar is telling you that the when the Horban occurs, the, the atonement of the Moshiach says, and he never smites the righteous man unless it is in order to grant healing to the generation and to make atonement for their sins. So the atonement now is going to be the Mashiach's atonement because of the Hurban. And Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 27 says the Mashiach has to come uh, before the Hurban. So these are indications along with the name, which is not Menachem, but Yeshua, Ezra 3, 8, Zechariah 6, 11, and 12, or the namesake, Yehoshua, Yeshua, ben Yehotzedach, raised up from the Golas to be the Kohen Gadol, to make the Kippurah, to rebuild the temple. He is the name source for the name target, which will be the future Moshiach 500 years later. Zaharia sees this. He comes up to him. He doesn't say, Yeshu. He doesn't say, uh, he doesn't, uh, Yushka, Yushka. He doesn't say this. He says, Yeshua. And in the Septuagint, Jesus. And in English, J-E-S-U-S. Your name is the Tzemach, which we know from uh, Jacob, uh, from, uh, I'm sorry, from the Aramaic Dictionary of Jastra. We know that that word Tzemach is a allegorical name for the coming Mashiach. So uh, here we have it. Uh, uh, the, the Mashiach ben Dovid will make the atonement. And if you want your sins forgiven and covered, uh, 
Yom Kippur is coming up Sunday. Turn to Him. Receive Him. Welcome Him. The only true Ribi, Melech HaMoshiach. Okay, today I'm looking at something very important. Before I speak of this uh, Jerusalem Talmud, I want to go come over here. The Jerusalem of Lithuania, Vilna in Yiddish, where uh, the guy that started the big yeshiva over in Lakewood, New Jersey, salvaged the learning of the Gaon of Vilna and planted it in Lakewood, New Jersey. Here's this uh, old magazine. It says, uh, Yiddish Vilna in word and picture. And of course, there's all kinds of legendary uh, looking back to the greatness of this period uh, and of this place. And of course, uh, today, uh, it, the, this is carried on over there in Lakewood, in this gigantic yeshiva where you have a thousand Bokarim and pears in a big study hall studying together. And it's this guy right here, the Gaon of Vilna. Now we're talking about somebody who lived back in the time of, of James Madison. But because these people are caught in this maze of the Talmud, where they live 24-7, 365, yes. uh, time goes by like nothing. So that by the time uh, I was born, this guy uh, who started this big yeshiva uh, went over there to Lakewood. And uh, of course, he was a Holocaust survivor from Vilna. Uh, and, 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 and all of this happened uh, uh, as if it were like a month or two, when actually we're talking about a couple hundred years or more. Uh, and, and the point I'm trying to make here is that, uh, that sometimes God will um, hide these things from the wise and reveal them unto babes. Yes. And here I am, a babe. And right here in the Jerusalem Tal Talmud, it says, Ribi Yehoshua ben Levi Amar Zemach Shemo. And what is this? This is uh, up on this particular page of Berachot 17a, and it's the Jerusalem Talmud, and it proves that Zechariah chapter 6, verses 11 to 12, is a messianic prophecy. And in the Tanakh, it says the, the Messiah's personal name will be Yeshua. So, Hineish uh, Zemach Shemo. Amen. So look, friend, uh, if this is true, this changes everything. So let's get our head out of the Talmud for a, for a minute here and put our nose in the Bible. Yes. And and yes, we use, we use these things. These are docking points, you might say, where the Yeshua ship might find safe harbor and take on passengers, as in the end of the book of Acts. So when you get to the Zohar, the third volume, page 288b, you have this passage that says, The ancient Holy One is revealed with three heads, which are united in one, and that one is threefold exalted. The Kedusha HaMeshuleshet. So if you, if you uh, have a big problem with this doctrine, I guess you have a problem with the Zohar because it's in the Zohar. You say, well, yeah, but you're misinterpreting the Zohar. Look, it's a bridge. A bridge is just a bridge. It's got to get you to where you're going. But here we have these, um, these, these sages with 20, 250, actually 2,500 years of sages. And, and we're trying to read the Bible with, with them as our lenses. And friend, I'm telling you, that can be very confusing after a while. This rabbi said this, and this rabbi said that. Let me just give you a rabbi. Rashi says that the one who came up to the Ancient of Days in, uh, in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, is the King Messiah. Now, if that's true, if, some, if, he, if the Baranosh is the Messiah, then friend, you need... You need to look at this. This is the Brown, Driver, and Briggs uh, Aramaic Dictionary, which says, Palak, Pe Lamed Het, 
pay reverence to or serve deity. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will not palak the uh, idols of Nebuchadnezzar, but all peoples will palak serve as deity, the Bar Enosh, because he is divine. He is Elohut. And uh, that's, that's the Bible. You say, oh, wait a minute, you're, you're quoting Brown, Driver, and Briggs. Uh, well, why don't you quote something Jewish? All right, here's uh, Marcus Jastrow's uh, Aramaic uh, dictionary, used by all the yeshiva bokers to serve deity, to worship. Here it is right here. Palak, the same definition. Hallelujah, the Mashiach. Hallelujah, the Lord whom you whom you seek will suddenly come to His temple. Uh, so uh, we're talking about El Gibor. We're talking about uh, David's Lord. We're talking about one Rabbi here, uh, Saul of Tarsus, who was a student of the Tana. Uh, Rabban Gamliel the Elder. He's the one that he's the rabbi you need to read. And 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 what I did was I studied him, and I I by the help of the Lord translated the Orthodox Jewish Bible. And this is the only translation I know of where when you get to Daniel, you actually get the 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 real goods here. Pay Lamed Het. Look at this. Chapter 7, verse 13. I'm going to read it to you. I was beholding in visions of the night, and Hine, one like a bar enosh, Moshiach, that's what Rashi says, came with the clouds of Shemayim and came to the Atik Yomin, the Ancient of Days, i.e. Hashem. And before him he was brought, and there was given him, that is Moshiach, dominion. And honor and sovereignty that all people, goyim, tongues, should pay lamed het. You see that? Daniel 3.12. Serve reverence as deity him. That's the Mashiach. Now this settles it, friends. Especially since his name is Yeshua. Uh, what, what more do we need? And, and I, I want to speak to you today about how good God is. Because he's revealed these things to babes and he's hidden them from the wise. And the Lord wants you to, to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. Uh, the Lord wants you to, to, to see his plan. It, it brings great glory to him if you could only see what he's doing. You know, in tennis... And I, I like to Google this, you know, the most fantastic tennis shot where, where your opponent is trying to serve you with a real fast serve, let's say 120 miles an hour, and you do something with a backhanded thing or whatever that is so glorious that you're actually taking what he's doing and flipping it around on him like a judo artist. Uh, this is how God has operated and we have to see it and give him the glory. He used one Haredi ultra-Orthodox persecutor named Shaul. Amen. And boy, we got these persecutors now. We have these guys, these anti-missionaries. These, uh, these, these guys, they want to kidnap you, put you in a motel, deprogram you, harass you, and do whatever it takes to, to, to get you away from this Yeshua. Uh, but... Uh, oh, hallelujah. What a glorious thing that this, this, this persecutor God used to be the great evangelist to the Goyim. Amen. So that the Goyim then could provoke the other ultra-Orthodox Jews Amen. to jealousy Amen. so that all Israel could be reconciled because God wants to reconcile the world. And Fred, he is doing it. We are not doing it. It's not about your merit, your godliness, how wonderful you are, what a great rabbi you are, how much Talmud you know, or anything about you. It's according to his call. Amen. He called yes. one man, and there were two in the womb of Rebecca. He called one 
to be Israel. And the other one was lost. He did it. He called Jacob. Before Jacob had done anything good or bad, before there was any merit, before there was any, any uh, legalistic, uh, uh, mock mirror, uh, uh, goodness, uh, where you're just, oh, you're just doing so many right things and you're just so wonderful, such a good guy. No. While they were in the womb, God did it so that his glory would shine. God is in the... It, this might come as a surprise to you, but he is the sovereign God. Amen. He he hardens who he wants to harden. Pharaoh, he hardened. Uh, look, he, he said, I'm going to make my name great and I'm going to use this guy. What if God, in order to make his glory even greater, Amen. did did what he wanted to do, calling this one and not that one? What if he decided to call a persecutor? And use him to, to reach a bunch of uh, Goyim who didn't know their left hand from their right hand, like me. Uh, and then what if, what, if, what if these Goyim could then be used to provoke all the, uh, the knowledgeable, wise, Gaon of Vilna type guys to come to salvation? What if that happened? Well, that's what, ha that's what did happen. That's what is happening. And I want to give God the glory. Now, I am not uh, trying to hawk this Bible and say, oh, this is the greatest Bible. This is the most wonderful Bible. No, I'm going to tell you, if you want to study the book of Romans, use this one. The New Testament in Modern Speech by R.F. Weymouth. This, this is the, the best that I know of. A translation of Romans because he goes through and he shows that merit is the culprit. When people think they have merit, when people think that they have uh, something they can boast about, that they can make God, put God in their debt, that God now has to play ball with them because they have done all these works and now God has to acknowledge their works and their merit and, and smile on them. No, that is, that is not the way it works at all. Amen. Salvation is a free gift so that no Amen. one can boast, friend, Amen. so that no Jew, no non-Jew, no, not me, not you, not anybody, no one can boast. Amen. It's all a wonderful gift from God. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his one and only, his ben yochid, so that whosoever... If you could just wrap your mind around this, what a miracle it is that you are a believer. Well, how God had to move heaven and earth to save someone like you. And that, that in these last days, he's going to save so many more people. And he wants to use you. That's why he... Just one, two, three, four, five words. I want you to look at face... Tav, Lamed, Tav, Resh, Yod, Sheen, Yod, Final Noon, and then Vav, Kaf, Lamed, Yod, Lamed, Final Noon, and then Base, Het, Dalet, and then Resh, Yod, Sheen, Aleph. Now, this is found Zohar. Uh, this is the Amsterdam edition, 288b, the third volume. And, um, these words these uh, particular words are telling you three heads united in one head very simple and it's talking about the Godhead. Three heads to 
uh, united in one head. That's what it's saying. This is the Safer Hazohar, the Amsterdam edition. Three heads united in one head. And this is what we believe. This is Judaism. Now, if you go to afii.org forward slash Zohar 3N1 dot PDF, you will see this in the Rashi script, which is a little harder to read, but we also have it in Hebrew so that you can actually look at it both ways. I hope you will do this, and I hope you will see that Moshiach, because of Daniel's writings in chapter 3 and chapter 7, is a divine personage. He is not a human being. He Mit Gashem takes on flesh as a human being, but he is from of old, from everlasting. And this is Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach. Okay, today I'm looking at something very important. Before I speak of this uh, Jerusalem Talmud, I want to go come over here. The Jerusalem of Lithuania, Vilna in Yiddish, where uh, the guy that started the big yeshiva over in Lakewood, New Jersey, salvaged the learning of the Gaon of Vilna and planted it in Lakewood, New Jersey. Here's this uh, old magazine. It says uh, Yiddish Vilna in word and picture. And of course, there's all kinds of legendary uh, looking back to the greatness of this period uh, and of this place. And, of course, uh, today uh, it, the, this is carried on over there in Lakewood in this gigantic yeshiva where you have a thousand bokarim and pairs in a big study hall studying together. And it's this guy right here, the Gaon of Vilna, now, we're talking about somebody who lived back in the time of, of James Madison. But because these people are caught in this maze of the Talmud, where they live 24-7, 365, yes. uh, time goes by like nothing. So that by the time uh, I was born, this guy uh, who started this big yeshiva uh, went over there to Lakewood, and, uh, of course, he was a Holocaust survivor from Vilna. Uh, and, 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 and all of this happened uh, uh, as if it were like a month or two, when actually we're talking about a couple hundred years or more. Uh, and, and the point I'm trying to make here is that, uh, that sometimes God will um, hide these things from the wise and reveal them unto babes. Yes. And here I am, a babe. And right here in the Jerusalem Tal Talmud, it says, Ribi Yahushua ben Levi Amar Zemach Shemo. And what is this? This is uh, up on this particular page of Berachot 17a. And it's the Jerusalem Talmud. And it proves that Zechariah chapter 6, verses 11 to 12, is a messianic prophecy. And in the Tanakh, it says the, the Messiah's personal name will be Yeshua. So, Hineish Zemach Shemo. Amen. So look, friend, uh, if this is true, this changes everything. So let's get our head out of the Talmud for a, for a minute here and put our nose in the Bible. Yes. And and yes, we we use these things. These are docking points, you might say, where the Yeshua ship might find safe harbor and take on passengers, as in the end of the book of Acts. So when you get to 
the Zohar, the third volume, page 288b, you have this passage that says the ancient Holy One is revealed with three heads, which are united in one, and that one is threefold exalted. The Kedusha HaMeshuleshet. So if you, if you uh, have a big problem with this doctrine, I guess you have a problem with the Zohar because it's in the Zohar. You say, well, yeah, but you're misinterpreting the Zohar. Look, it's a bridge. A bridge is just a bridge. It's got to get you to where you're going. But here we have these... Um, these, these sages with 20, 250, actually 2,500 years of sages. And, and we're trying to read the Bible with, with them as our lenses. And friend, I'm telling you, that can be very confusing after a while. This rabbi said this and this rabbi said that. Let me just give you a rabbi. Rashi says that the one who came up to the Ancient of Days in, uh, in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, is the King Messiah. Now, if that's true, if, some, if, he, if the Baranosh is the Messiah, then, friend, you need, you need to look at this. This is the Brown, Driver, and Briggs uh, Aramaic Dictionary, which says, Palak, pay lamed het, pay reverence to or serve deity. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will not palak the uh, idols of Nebuchadnezzar, but all peoples will palak serve as deity, the Bar Enosh, because he is divine. He is Elohut. And uh, that's, that's the Bible. You say, oh, wait a minute. You're, you're quoting Brown, Driver, and Briggs. Uh, look, why don't you quote something Jewish? All right, here's uh, Marcus Jastro's... Uh, Aramaic uh, dictionary used by all the yeshiva bokers to serve deity, to worship. Here it is right here. Palak. Same definition. Hallelujah. The Mashiach. Hallelujah. The Lord whom you, whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Uh, so uh, we're talking about El Gibor. We're talking about uh, David's Lord. We're talking about one rabbi here, uh, Saul of Tarsus, who was a student of the Tana, uh, Rabban Gamliel the Elder. He's the one that he's the rabbi you need to read. And 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 what I did was I studied him, and I I by the help of the Lord translated the Orthodox Jewish Bible, and. This is the only translation I know of where when you get to Daniel, you actually get the, 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 the real goods here. Pay Lamed Het. Look at this. Chapter 7, verse 13. I'm going to read it to you. I was beholding in visions of the night. And Hine, one like a bar enosh, Moshiach. That's what Rashi says came with the clouds of Shemayim and came to the Atik Yomim, the Ancient of Days, i.e. Hashem. And before him he was brought, and there was given him, that is Moshiach, dominion and honor and sovereignty that all people, goyim, tongues, should pay Lamed Het. You see that? Daniel 3.12. Serve reverence as deity him. That's the Moshiach. Now this settles it, friends, especially since his name is Yeshua. Uh, what, what more do we need? And, and I, I want to speak to you today about how good God is. Because he's revealed these things to babes. And he's hidden them from the wise. And the Lord wants you to, to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. Uh, the Lord wants you to, to, to see his plan. It, it brings great glory to him if you could only see what he's doing. You know, in tennis, and I, I like to Google this, you know, the most fantastic tennis shot where, where your opponent is trying to serve you with a real fast serve, let's say 120 miles an hour, and you do something with a backhanded thing or whatever that is so glorious that you're actually taking what he's doing and flipping it around on him like a judo artist. Uh, 
This is how God has operated, and we have to see it and give him the glory. He used one Haredi ultra-Orthodox persecutor named Shaul. And boy, we got these persecutors now. We have these guys, these anti-missionaries, these, uh, these, these guys, they want to kidnap you, put you in a motel, deprogram you, harass you, and do whatever it takes to, to, to get you away from this Yeshua. Uh, but, uh, oh, hallelujah, what a glorious thing that this, this, this persecutor God used to be the great evangelist to the Goyim Amen. so that the Goyim then could provoke the other ultra-Orthodox Jews Amen. to jealousy Amen. so that all Israel could be reconciled because God wants to reconcile the world. Amen. And friend, he is doing it. We are not doing it. Amen. It's not about your merit, your godliness, how wonderful you are, what a great rabbi you are, how much talk, Talmud you know, or anything about you. It's according to his call. Amen. He called yes. one man, and there were two in the womb of Rebecca. He called one to be Israel, and the other one was lost. Amen. He did it. He called Jacob. Before Jacob had done anything good or bad, before there was any merit, before there was any, any uh, legalistic, uh, uh, machmir, uh uh, goodness uh, where you're just oh you're just doing so many right things and you're just so wonderful such a good guy no while they were in the womb God did it so that his glory would shine God is in the it, this might come as a surprise to you but he is the sovereign God he he hardens who he wants to harden Pharaoh he hardened uh, Look, he, he said, I'm going to make my name great and I'm going to use this guy. What if God, in order to make his glory even greater, did, did what he wanted to do, calling this one and not that one? What if he decided to call a persecutor and use him to, to reach a bunch of uh, Goyim who didn't know their left hand from their right hand like me? Uh, and then what if, what if, what if these Goyim could then be used to provoke all the, uh, the knowledgeable, wise, Gaon of Vilna type guys to come to salvation? What if that happened? Well, that's what, ha that's what did happen. That's what is happening. And I want to give God the glory. Now, I am not uh, trying to hawk this Bible and say, oh, this is the greatest Bible. This is the most wonderful Bible. No, I'm going to tell you, if you want to study the book of Romans, use this one, the New Testament in Modern Speech by R.F. Weymouth. This, this is the, the best that I know of a translation of Romans because he goes through and he shows that merit is the culprit. When people think they have merit, when people think that they have uh, something they can boast about, that they can make God, put God in their debt, mm -hmm. that God now has to play ball with them because they have done all these works and now God has to acknowledge in their works and their merit and, and smile on them. No, that is, that is not the way it works at all. Salvation is a free gift so that no Amen. one can boast, friend, Amen. so that no Jew, no non-Jew, no, not me, not you, not anybody, no one can boast. Amen. It's all a wonderful gift from God. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his one and only, his ben yochid, so that whosoever, if you could just wrap your mind around this, what a miracle it is that you are a believer. Well, how God had to move heaven and earth to save someone like you. And that, that in these last days, he's going to save so many more people. And he wants to use you. That's why he... Do you see this? Nishimot, which I have made. This uh, is where the Tanya gets the idea of two souls. And uh, over here... It speaks of 
the um, nefesh, the ruach, and the uh, neshama. And the idea here is that there needs to be a correction, at least some people say that. There needs to be a comma right here in the beginning of the second chapter to clarify that the Tanya is not denigrating the non-Jew uh, as if he did not have a second soul. However, you don't see a comma there, do you? And the point that we're trying to make, which is extremely important, is that just as Hitler denigrated the Jew in his Mein Kampf, so that later the idea of the Jew being just an animal who could be herded to the death camps like you would take cattle to the killing stalls uh, where they could be, uh, you know, the Chicago stockyards kind of thing. Uh, this, this is all where you go astray if you get away from the Bible. Now, right over here, I want us to think about the drill sergeant. If you study the drill sergeant, you will find that his job is to regularize civilians and turn them into soldiers. And when you get to the book of, of uh, Acts, you find out that God wants to regularize the believers. And uh, that means that um, when they began to be filled with the Holy Spirit, in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, it says they all began to speak in Lishonot Hadashot as the Holy Spirit gave the utterance. So um, when you go back to the scriptures and you look at Isaiah uh, chapter uh, 57 verse 16 which is sometimes used as a proof text for the Tanya you see that word nishamot there I made the shamot I made this is not referring to Adam and it's taking it out of context to make it refer to Adam. Go back and uh, look at uh, the book of Genesis, and you will see that God breathed into one man, one soul. And that's why our Mashiach says, what can a man give in exchange for his soul? A man does not have two souls, like a cat has nine lives in the old expression. So if he loses one life, he still has eight more. No. A man's soul is precious. What can he give in exchange for it? I mean, he only has one. And uh, that's true whether he's a Jew or a Gentile. So uh, go back and look at Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And you will see here that they all began to be, uh, they were all filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, all of them. Now in Acts chapter uh, 10, uh, we find out that when Kepha is on the roof of Simon the Tanner in Joppa. He gets hungry, and while they're making a meal for him, he falls into a tardama. And the uh, word there in the original language is ecstasy. Epsilon, Kappa, Sigma, Tau, Alpha, Sigma, Yoda, Final Sigma. Uh, this is a Jewish Greek. Um, think about what Hitler did here. 
He said, all who are not of a good race are chaff. What do you do with chaff? You burn them. What did they do with uh, the Jews who were supposedly not of a good race? They burned them in the crematorium. The crematoria. Uh, this is the evil doctrine that is in Mein Kampf. How do you get this uh, ex ecstasis, this um, tardema? It's not a deep tardema. It's almost like sleepwalking. I've experienced it. It's an altered state of consciousness where God speaks to you. This has happened to me at least twice, and it was only for emergencies. And it was usually a, a life or death thing uh, where God was sparing somebody, doing something miraculous. It wasn't a little parlor trick to, to raise money in a congregation to get the little old ladies to empty their purses. Now, uh, in Lubavitch, there was a ribby who would supposedly fall into a trance, and he would pr pray motionless for hours, and his clothes and his hat would be very sweaty. And many uh, Hasidim want this kind of ecstasy. Uh, but the the thing is, they're looking for it in the wrong place. They should look for it. Um, it says, and Hashem Elohim caused a tardema. Do you see this word? A deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Why did he do that? Because he wanted to do some kind of operation, abnormal operation. If you want this abnormal supernatural operation going on in your life, uh, it says, first of all, Yohanan chapter 20, verse 31, but these things have been written that you might have imunah, that Yehoshua, Yeshua, Zechariah 6, 11, and 12, Ezra 3, 8, this is the namesake, uh, Yehoshua ben Yehotzadak, the namesake of the name source, uh, projected forward to the name target, which is Yeshua ben David, 500 years later, you must believe that he is the Rebbe Melek Hamoshiach, the Zunfunderoivister, and that believing with saving Imunah, you may have Hayim, uh, Haye Olam, Bashem, of him in, the, in his name. That's what we're talking about. And so you, uh, so you must believe. Uh, having believed, have you received the Ruach HaKodesh is the question in Acts uh, chapter uh, 19. And it says, And when Rav Shaul placed his hands upon them, the Ruach HaKodesh came upon them. This is when the Spirit of God falls upon you. And they were speaking in Lashonot. Lashonot Hadashot. And they were speaking Devarim HaNevuah. When I was a very uh, young believer, easily um, puffed up, a lady stood up and gave a message in another tongue, and then she gave the interpretation, in eight days, God is going to use you. But when the eight days came around, I found out that he did use me, but it wasn't me, and it humbled me uh, because the prophecy was fulfilled. Now, this, this still goes on today, friends, and this is what the Hasidim are looking for. This is what they're trying to get, but they're looking for it in the wrong place. Uh, there's even a doctrine that you can have the Shekhinah if you have the Vekas with a scholar. 
Well, when you go to Sanhedrin 65b, you find out that the scholar there talks about a golem uh, being made, bara, which only God can do, which is an error, and it's buba mainza, uh, and there's a that's the only reference to a golem in the in the Talmud. But there's another reference to these uh, scholars that uh, create a prime calf, which they eat for Shabbos dinner. Uh, you can Google this stuff and see it, but friends, uh, this is not what we want to talk about. What we want to talk about is not the Tanya, but the Lubavitcher Bible that we translated. Because God wants you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I thank God that in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 8, where Shimon the sorcerer sees something happen, you know, when the Holy Spirit falls on people, something happens. And then we might ask, well, what happens? Well, one of the things that happens as we look to chapter 10, where the non-Jews are filled with the Holy Spirit and they all begin to speak in unknown tongues. And also in chapter 19, where the, the Ephesians are asked, having believed, have you received the Holy Spirit? Now, if you will simply uh, go to Google and type cer certificate, C-E-R, Certificate, certificate um, of mikvah, maim. You will find the very first reference here: certificate of tivila in Moshiach's mikvah maim. And here's a. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kitshanu B'Mitzvotah V'Tzivanu Al Tevila B'Shem Adoshem V'Zun Fun Roi V'Shter V'Ruach HaKodesh. Now we're talking about the Tevila in uh, the Mikvah Mayim of the Ruach HaKodesh, which goes beyond the mikvah of repentance. And this is how the Shulahim regularized. They didn't formalize the believers, but they regularized the believers in the same way that a drill sergeant regularizes civilians, teaches them how to have real physical stamina and bravery and loyalty in, in battle and how to say yes sir no matter what and many other things they are regularized and since all began to speak in tongues in the upper room all 120 they all began to speak in unknown tongues supernatural speech they all began to speak in this supernatural speech acts chapter 2 verse 4 then the, the Shulahim would regularize the believers in Samaria and other places. Uh, and how would they regularize them? By laying hands on them so that they also could be filled with the Holy Spirit and have the same Lashonot Hadashot that was in the upper room. And so, my friend, it's time to put the Tanya down and pick up the Lubavitcher Bible, the Orthodox Jewish Bible. Amen.